Hello and welcome to Broadsword Wargaming. My name is Ollie and I am joined by Kira. And today we have an exclusive video for you. Um, if this is out on time, we have got a load of new products that you have not yet seen. By now, you might have seen that GW is uh, releasing a whole new range of contrast paints and shades, new colors, new formulas. I think they're reformulating some of the old ones as well. Well, we got to try some out over in GW HQ, so we have our first impressions made already. But we're going to sit down, we're going to go through some of our favorites, how we like to use them, what they're like. So keep watching if you want to know what to expect from the new line. With 25 brand new contrast paints, seven new shades, a new spray can, and a remixing of a whole ton of other shades, there's a lot to get through. Fortunately, Kira and I had seen these paints before. We were lucky enough to get invited to the Warhammer World Horus Heresy Open Day weekend, and on the Sunday, they snuck us into a secret room and let us play with all of the new paints. Sitting around with some of the best and biggest content creators in the world, it was actually a great experience and a really good way to get everybody's opinions and thoughts on each of the paints. There was quite a diverse range of people there, but it still felt like some of them were universally liked by everybody. Now, I don't see myself as an amazing painter, but it was nice to have their experiences too. Fruit sticks. Oh. That was close. I nearly flipped the model into the open paint all over the desk. Overall, it was a great way to get to play with everything and meeting everybody was an amazing experience. What's the time for? Victory lap? Yeah, yeah. Oh, victory lap. Victory lap. All right, so first up, let's talk about shades. Let's talk about shades, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Right, what have you got? What's in that? This is a bag of shades. <laughs> the old colors. They have reformulated the old colors to make them better. Mm -hmm. And they have put them in a new size bottle. So now the bottles are the same size as the contrast paint bottles. I don't mind that. I think not only does it make it easier to store them, also mainly because I've spilled so many, hopefully I'm spilling less. Now I don't know what the price point's gonna be on these. I'm hoping it'll be cheaper for less. Something tells me it might be the same for less. I don't know. Um, yeah, old paints, who really cares? These are the old colors. We don't, we wanna get the new colors. So we've done some swatches. Here are the swatches. Okay, here are all the new shades ready to be swatched on our lovely fresh palette. Berserker Blood Shade is first. Targor Rage Shade. Pox Walker. Mortarian Grime, probably my favorite. Fugan Orange. Tyrin Blue, a nice bright blue. And Soul Blight Grey. As you can see, there's a lovely shade range here from your darker browns to your bright blue, your bright orange. That soul blight grey is calling my name for some Tau. Mortarian Grime, a top favourite as well. With all of the shades done and dusted, it's onto the meat and bones of the video, the contrast paints. I will also note that Games Workshop have developed a new white undercoat spray, apparently smoother and cleaner than the rest. And it was significantly better. So what stands out to you first? What are you excited to play with? I'm going to go with the one I remember being good, and that was the Contrast Imperial Fist, I think. A nice yellow. Paint. Such a good paint. Right, let's, let's do that. Me, I've not used this one before. I'm really excited. This is Dreadful Visage. It's like a, like a, it's perfect Slaneshi color. This is going to go on my demonette skin. And I'm really hoping this works because I have a lot of demonettes to paint. This went on just how I remembered. This was one of the universally liked paints at the painting event, and I can see why. You get a really smooth yellow with a nice bit of contrast. Hmm. What do you think? Immediately, not sure how I feel about this. Oh, immediately not, in, not a fan. I do like the color. I'm gonna wait and see what it looks like when it's dry. I was expecting it, like your yellow is so opaque. Mm. This isn't, this is, this is more sort of see-through. The amount of contrast medium or water you use to thin these paints really does have an effect on it. This was straight out of the pot and it has a lovely finish, as you can see. My final thoughts on the Dreadful Visage are not great. This feels much more like a shade than a contrast paint and I will be using it as such. The Luxian Purple, or as I call it, the Black Hole paint is so unbelievably dark. I am going to love this for my Slanesh Army for some straps and things that I want to be black but not quite black. As you can see, when it's watered down here a little bit, it is a beautiful, beautiful purple shade that does its job as a contrast really, really well. Here we're painting on some Hex Wraith Flame, which used to be a technical paint, but is now a contrast paint. This always felt like a contrast paint for me, and I'm pretty sure it's doing the exact same job as it did before. 
and here it is next to Frost Heart. So both of these are really, really nice. The coverage being a little bit better on Frost Heart, but I can't say anything bad about either of these. As a long-term Eldar fan, I had to try my hand with the Striking Scorpion Green. It is pretty much the exact color you'd expect, a nice, bright, vivid green. This is watered down with about 50-50 water to the paint. I also tried the Karandras Green, and this one was beautiful. You can see there, again, at a 50-50 mix, just how smooth that is. Although I'm not entirely sure what I would use these particular paints for, they are without a doubt really, really nice. There's actually two that I've been looking forward to trying here. I'm going to use this on a base. These are the frosty kind of colours. So I'm going to do half and half. I think it's these two. Briar Queen Chill and Pilar Glacier. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do half a base with one and half a base with the other. Because yep. I think both of these sound like they're supposed to be sort of icy kind of colours. So we'll see. I'm excited for these. First up on this side is Briar Queen Chill. Uh, that's going to be really nice for your night haunt type models. Then we have Pilar Glacier, which has a really nice icy effect. Both of these to me felt more like technical paints and less like contrast paints. I think they're both going to be very, very popular, especially Pilar Glacier. Sigvald Burgundy is one of the most beautiful shades that they have come out with. It is super, super opaque. It is a beautiful color. The coverage is amazing. It's got a lovely matte finish. As you can see, I tried to water it down a little bit at the top here and it turned sort of pink. I wasn't a fan of that. This is better used straight from the pot. Kira and I then spent about the next hour to an hour and a half playing and applying with the remainder of the paints. I'll now go through all of the remaining paints on various models, whether it's a white or bone undercoat, just so you get an idea of how they look. This is Croxigore Scales, almost directly out of the pot, an absolutely stunning colour and one we weren't really expecting to like. Black Legion is the matte version of Black Templar. I'd applied a fair bit of medium to this, it was quite thin, but it did give you a nice finish. Then it was all of the reds. Now personally, I wasn't a huge fan of these, not because they were bad, just they're not really to my style, but of course painting is really subjective and you might find a really nice use for in the same vein as Coxigore Scales, I thought Eldaria Emerald was really nice too. Night Haunt Gloom had a nice subtle finish to it and would be perfect for skin tones. Rattling Grime felt more like a technical paint, whereas Gargrax Sewer was a lovely rat skin colour. Having been watered down a little, Mantis Warriors Green and Gut Ripper Flesh both felt a little more pastely, a little more natural and slightly less vibrant than the other greens. Contrast Imperial Fist, the winner for me, the absolute star of the show. If you are new to painting or not, and you want to get yellow done quickly, this is without a doubt the way. I enjoyed yellow and bad. I mean, yellow weren't bad. I just felt one was a little more muckier and one was a bit lighter, brighter, but didn't have as much shading involved naturally with it. I hope you found that bit useful. Of course, everything we have said is subjective to us and everybody likes to paint in a different style, but hopefully it's given you an idea of how the paints look on models. I'm impressed. My okay. top three. Have you got top three? I've got a top three. I have a top three. So mine are Imperial Fist Yellow. I think that's mine as that's well. That's my top one. Number two is Croxagore Scales, just because I haven't seen a color like that before and it's just so beautiful. And my next one is the Glacier one. Okay. They're called again. Uh, Pilar Glacier. Pilar Glacier. I think that is going to be so handy. Even though it does seem a little bit more like a technical paint. I just think with a bit of snow and stuff and a bit of a dry brush of white, that's a really nice frosty colour. And then the one that I was disappointed with was the Dreadful Visage. All the rest are so opaque and vibrant and bright. And I wanted this one to be the same so that I could do all my Demonette Hides in this colour. There is actually a colour called Demonette Hide and I wanted this to be that in a contrast. Oddly, some of the ones I really liked were these random colours. So there's a, the Eldari Emerald is this bright green. Mm -hmm. That looks like Coxigore scales, so it looks a little bit like the one you liked, mm -hmm. but kind of a brighter. Now, it's not a colour I'd use very often. Um, I don't think yeah. I paint an army like that. And then the real 90s vibes are the Carandras green and the Striking Scorpion green. These are actually have shaded really nicely. So, so all in all, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I like them and I think they filled in the holes of the contrast we didn't have previously, right? There were no bright contrasts and we've always used the dark ones. I've always used the bones, the, the yeah. browns for like pouches and stuff. So it's not a style I use a lot. Um, I don't know how many, how many of these I would use going forward. Definitely a few of these that I will be rotating into my normal ones. Now you haven't used much of the Army Painter speed paints, but I have. I, I have I've, I've used them a good few times. How does it compare, do you think, in honesty? I genuinely feel like these ones are a lot better. 
So I think the reason people like the Army Painter ones is because they were like contrast paints, but super bright with not lots of coverage. Mm -hmm. These have that, but these don't reactivate with water. That's so a big selling score point. one. And the texture is better. I wasn't a huge fan of the texture of the speed paints. So yeah, I, I actually do think these are a lot better. I feel like a walking, talking GW billboard right now. <laughs> yeah. I've been trying to find things that I don't like about these. Yeah. But I, I can't, apart from this one that I was not that impressed with. But I think the thing with the colors as well is it's really subjective. So there's definitely colors here I wouldn't use, but I do think look good. Right? Well, that's it. I, to be honest, I'm not a fan of like the non-natural type colors. I love my kind of leafy greens Earthies. and earthy colors. So these wouldn't be ones I would buy, but they're just really nice. If you guys enjoyed the video, let us know in the comments below if there's colors. I don't think we missed anything really. Um, the only thing I would say is it'd be nice to try all these through an airbrush. So maybe you could do that in another video. Yeah, if you guys want to see that, actually, if you want to see them, if you got this far and you want to see them through an airbrush, I might do that. I might put, put them all through an airbrush because it, it actually turns into like a tinty color rather than a paint. It's a bit different. Well, now the old ones did. These are much more opaque, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. So I might do that. I might put them all through an airbrush. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please do remember to like, share, subscribe, and hit the alarm bell below for more videos. Check out all the links down as well. Link to the shop, to the Patreon. The Patreon gets you access to a private Discord, a monthly hangout, and a few other bits as well. And also, you've got some bits down there. Check it out, it's fine. Yeah, Kira's Twitch and Instagram. <laughs> um, so thanks so much, guys, for sticking with us. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you in another one. Take care.